come along with me on a whole day of homemaking with the newborn. I am about one month postpartum at this point when I am filming this video and I thought I would take you along on a very realistic day of a mom with three kids and a newborn. Well, I guess technically two kids and a newborn, so in total three. If you guys are new here, my name is Noelle. I do all kind of homemaking content as well as motherhood and thrifting, all of that good stuff, food made from scratch. Starting out the morning, I got dressed and nursed the baby, gave the kids breakfast. I took out some meat to thaw for later because how many of you have not thawed out the meat and then dinner time comes around and you're like scrambling to find something? Yeah, that's often me. So I remembered and left myself a note the night before because I am pretty forgetful during this postpartum, during these early postpartum days to thaw out the meat. Just thaw out that meat, girl, okay? And now I'm just going to stock my pantry with some items that we were running low on. I like to make my own homemade brown sugar. I get my sugar from Costco. I get organic cane sugar in bulk from Costco and mix it with molasses in my stand mixer. And there you go, fresh brown sugar. It is the best. If you guys have not tried it, highly recommend, very easy to do. I definitely was running low on molasses, so I am trying to squeeze out every little bit that I can because this is gonna be some light, <laughs> some light brown sugar, let me tell you, because I was running low on molasses, but nevertheless, it works. It tasted good, but yeah, I usually like to add a lot more molasses than this. But you know, sometimes you just gotta work with what you have and just do the best you can, okay? So that's what I'm doing here, is just mixing that up. I also filled the stand mixer a little too high with sugar. I like to make big batches of things, okay? So I don't have to do it too often. But um, yeah, my stand mixer is about to overflow. But you know, nevertheless, it's okay. We are just rolling with things today. I also am starting to run low on my homemade vanilla extract. If you don't make your own, you should because you save so much money this way if you do a lot of baked goods. Even if you don't bake a ton, I still recommend to make your own. All you got to do is get vodka or some bourbon. I like to use bourbon whiskey. Don't mix the two but get some vanilla beans that are good quality from Amazon. I like to get mine in bulk from Amazon. That's where you get the best deal that I find because vanilla beans can be expensive. Vanilla bean pods, and then you just put it in a mason jar and let it sit for about three months. You can jumpstart it by pouring in um, store-bought vanilla if you want to and you can start using it right away, but if not, wait about three months, put it in like a cold, dark place, and just let that sit. I am filling up my little crock for my brown sugar that I like to add to my coffee daily, just so I have it right there, easy and accessible, because I am running around this house kind of in survival mode, to be very honest with you guys, having a newborn, and slowly starting to get back into, I don't really have a routine. I would be absolutely lying if I said I had one. I am more of a rhymes person, so kind of just go with the flow of the day. But you know, little things make everything flow easier. You know what I'm saying? And then I am storing the rest of my brown sugar in a mason jar. And then that was full. And then I think I also put some in a plastic bag for later. We go through a lot of brown sugar with all of my baking for sure. But yeah, if you guys haven't tried the vanilla bean extract and brown sugar at home, it's great. It saves you so much money too. Now I am just about to grab all of the breast milk that I've been storing. Breast milk has been a huge part of my day. I have my haka on right now as I am recording this voiceover <laughs> for you guys. But breast milk has been a huge 
part of my daily rhyme, if you will, which is not something I was dealing with before because my kids are a lot older than my newborn. They are five and six. So going all the way back to breastfeeding, I was breastfeeding them as toddlers, but it's been a while. So here we are back in this routine, back into the swing of preserving breast milk and using, I'm not really using a pump, I'm using my haka. I am able to store so much milk with my haka. I will do like a whole video on that method though. There's not really much to it. I am an overproducer, so if you see this big jar of breast milk, um, you know, and you're not, maybe you're just a, a nuffer or an underproducer, whatever your scenario is, I am an overproducer to be very transparent with you. This is probably about two days worth of extra breast milk that I am just putting in a jar because at this point my milk has not regulated yet. But currently while I'm filming this, it has, and I'm only getting about half of that in about three or four days. But when I was recording this video, my milk had not regulated and I was filling up one of those jars, a whole jar every two to three days. So I'm glad it's regulated. I am showing you the cream line. I guess it's not a cream line. I am not a cow. That is what you would call the... Oh yeah, look at that beautiful line of nice fatty breast milk, which is a lot of good nutrient dense milk, which I believe they would call that your hind milk, which comes after your fore milk. Anywho, I am just doing the pitcher method with that. I'm gonna pour all of my bags that I have collected of breast milk into my jar and deal with it later. Okay, so moving on to laundry, I am just throwing things into the wash. I'm not doing too many separate loads because I just don't have time for that. We are just going to do the kids' clothes, and sometimes, honestly, I just throw everything in together, but I'm trying to keep it simple, guys. It's about survival right now. I am also running low on laundry detergent. This is the day of, like, restock for me. I noticed we were low on so many things. And I have been trying to just get back in the swing of homemaking because I have been spending a lot of time in bed, a lot of time resting, as you should. I am very grateful that I have had the privilege to be able to do that because I know not everyone can just sit in bed for a few weeks. So shout out to my mom and my husband, my brother. Everyone's been amazing and they have been really great at supporting me during this time. So I'm extremely grateful. I have a whole video if you want to see how I make my easy, simple laundry detergent. It works really well. It's very cost efficient. I will leave it in the cards for you or um, just check on my channel. You'll see it. It hasn't been that long since I made it, but now I'm just doing some little tidying up around the house. I'm taking down that quilted banner that I had up from Noah's birthday, or I really just had it up for a while after that too. And restocking the little diaper drawer that I have. This has made my life so much easier by keeping diapers, wipes, burp cloths, and my little wrap in this drawer. This is what I call the baby drawer and I use it all the time every day. So I don't have to go up and down the stairs constantly. I also keep a little change of like clothes for her as well. That's been very helpful I must say. <laughs> And now I'm just trying to put things back in their place because, you know, having three kids, your house is going to get messed up quick. That I try to stay on top of that as well as I'm refreshing that quilt because it got dirty and it needs a new quilt. Who doesn't love, even in summer, a nice cozy quilt? Because we keep the AC running and the fans going, so it's still pretty cold in my house. 
Now it is time for a nursing break because we have several of those a day, of course. As you can imagine, having a newborn, I'm also gonna do a quick little diaper change. But I've been spending so much time on the couch nursing or at my kitchen table. We do a lot of nursing because she is still what I would call cluster feeding. I don't mind because it gives me a really good break from whatever I am doing. And it just makes me really stop and soak in all the newborn moments and I am not mad at any of the nursing breaks. I am fully embracing them. They have been honestly amazing. I am showing you my Hakka collection that I got. This was probably about two to three ounces of extra milk that I got from my letdown and I put that cap on it. That cap has been a lifesaver when it comes to not spilling any extra milk because let's be real i will be one to cry over spilled breast milk okay i do not want that spilling and getting all over the place okay so trying to get back on my feet took a nursing break which was great but i still have things to do around the house and the baby has been a little bit fussy and doesn't want to be let down she takes about like 10 she takes about 10 to 20 minute naps at a time so that I find myself that I don't have a lot of time to do many things throughout the day. So I try to put her in the wrap and bring her along with me, which works really well. She enjoys the wrap, but if I could suggest anything when it comes to baby wearing, it would be make sure you take care of the baby's needs first before you try to put them in the wrap. Otherwise, they will not be happy and they won't love it so much. So I'm trying to get her to, you know, be happy, enjoy the baby wrap, and she will fall asleep. Otherwise, it's every 10 to 20 minutes waking up. So I'm just trying to manage and get things done. I'm just trying to get some things done. Nothing crazy, just some basic things around the house. Let's talk a little bit about homemaking with a newborn. Honestly, I would not stress too much about doing all of the things. It's definitely about survival and really drawing in and going back to basics and finding out what does your family need? What are the needs? Are they met? And really keep it basic like that for a while. I would probably say the first several months, I wouldn't worry too much about routines and anything extra unless you have the time for it or the energy. For me, it's more about are the kids, do they have clean clothes? Do we have something to eat? Do we, I'm not making all the things from scratch right now. I don't usually make all the things from scratch on a regular basis, but I try my best to make a lot of the baked things and some of our meals from scratch but I'm not one to go super crazy and make the cheese and the pasta and everything from scratch at this moment I just don't have the time for all of that or the energy but maybe one day every now and then but I don't see myself being like you know all from scratch or nothing kind of person I really feel like in homemaking things don't have to be all or nothing you really just got to pick and choose what's important to you is it important that you have homemade fresh pasta every time you want to make a pasta dish maybe but i'm just i'm not that it's not that deep for me so we do the best we do the best that we can with the time we have with the energy we have and yeah just thank god for what we've got going so far and not trying to push yourself and spread yourself too thin, especially with kids. Okay, here's me attempting to <laughs> do a transfer into the rocker. And was it successful? No, I don't think it was. Usually I'm not successful at trying to transfer her. She wakes up every single time. And that's just kind of how it is. So she's awake. I'm taking my wrap off to see if I can get her to sit for a little bit while I do the dishes. There's a lot of dishes. I try to stay on top of them as the day goes, but sometimes they pile up. I highly recommend paper plates if you are a postpartum mom because that has been great. At this time, we ran out of paper plates, unfortunately, or we just had a few left. So, yeah.
that's just how that is so I have dishes in the sink and I'm just gonna quickly do those but yeah back to homemaking like I was saying again you do not have to do all of the things especially during this season of life is very busy it's full of transition give yourself a lot of grace and don't worry about all of the things do the things that are absolutely necessary are the kids fed do they have clean clothes that kind of stuff like nothing super extra my kids have been adjusting so well to their new little sister it's honestly the cutest thing and I guess we could talk a little bit about the transition the transition has been really really good I am so surprised and very proud of my kids they have been honestly amazing they love her so much and they always want to play with her And they're very careful around her, which is something I was worried about because I didn't know if they were going to be super rowdy or jumping around. And they've been great, honestly. The transition has blown my mind. The transition has blown my mind. And I have thanked God for that because I was a little bit worried when it came to adding a third baby because I didn't know how I was going to handle it, how they were going to handle it. But honestly through lots of prayer and also letting go of high expectations, the transition has been really good. And is everyone's hair perfectly done and, you know, clothes perfectly matched? No, none of that. Nothing is perfect, but we are honestly doing great. But nothing is perfect and that is okay. That is not the season of life we are in. So I'm just trying to encourage you because I know a lot of you moms were pregnant with me and on this journey and a lot of you, your babies have been born. So congratulations. I have been seeing I have been seeing a lot of your baby photos online and announcements and I am so happy for all of you guys. So if you're in this season with me, congratulations to all the moms out there, whether you're a new mom or adding a baby to your family. I am so happy for you guys enjoy this time truly soak it in i have two other that are growing so fast and this time around it is incredibly different and i am so grateful for that i'm just reading noah a story here he brought me a book so we're reading one of the beatrix potter books my kids love these i actually love these probably more than they do love beatrix potter she is a classic and i enjoyed her books growing up But we're just doing another nursing session and reading a book together, lots of snuggles. Like I said, I am not in the kitchen much these days. I am just kind of popping in and out and doing what I can with the time I have and trying to adjust to being interrupted a lot and just accepting that that's okay. But not just accepting it, but truly embracing it and really good. And I feel like God is teaching me a lot in this season of postpartum. And I am truly not wishing this first year away like I did with my other kids. I want time to slow down. Here is my husband. We were listening to music. He is so cute. Anyways, we're having a moment here. But after that, I'm going to start dinner. I just want to brag about him just a little bit, to be honest. He has been amazing. He had to take on so much when I was in bed he has been great he definitely held it down but it also feels really good to be back on my feet and doing things okay for sure anyways now we're just making dinner this has been a staple in the last probably few months it's very easy i call it one pan enchiladas and it's just really simple i my meat was still a little bit frozen so you saw me kind of putting in some work to get it (laughs) actually ground beef texture because it was a little bit frozen i opened the windows let some fresh air in it was a nice cool day it wasn't extremely hot and you could see my little curtains blowing it was definitely a vibe i love to romanticize my life when i can you guys i know it sounds kind of corny cliche cheesy whatever but it, it really is those moments that you got to take advantage and really do it. Kind of like my life is a movie kind of vibe. Highly recommend. I know it sounds weird, but just just try it. And now I am chopping up some poblano peppers, adding in some 
frozen onions that I chopped and preserved because my onions were going bad so I wanted to make sure that I didn't waste food because I hate wasting food. We all know that the food bill is high, it's expensive, inflation is not playing with us so onions in a bag frozen is what I did. And now I'm just adding that to my meat. So I have onions, poblano peppers, ground beef. I'm going to add some taco seasoning, some salsa verde, salt, pepper. Obviously, you cannot cook anything without salt and pepper. And I'm just going to let that simmer on the stove for a little bit. And then I'm going to take my store-bought tortillas, some cheese, roll them up, and do a whole bunch of those and then cut a few so it fits my pan as well as put a little bit of salsa verde on top of that once I layer it in the pan and some more cheese and then bake it and top it off with some green onion cilantro lime and you guys this is so 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 easy and quick so I love meals love meals that are really easy and quick and not to mention those one pot one pan meals you cannot beat them especially postpartum this would be a really good one to save you know for a postpartum meal we have also done different variations of this you can play with this and put really whatever you want in it a few of you guys tried it on instagram and or a few of you tried it from instagram and said you really really liked it so i'm glad but sometimes we add refried beans or you could add corn, you could add tomatoes, you could add really whatever you want to this and it would be really, really good. But yeah, just a nice, simple, easy dinner. This has definitely been a favorite of ours for sure. After dinner we enjoyed some good dinner and here's my brother in our fridge just checking it out getting whatever he wants out of there and then we're just chatting and here's me <laughs> I spilled breast milk all on me you can find me usually covered in breast milk most days now because that's just life when you are exclusively breastfeeding a new baby so lots of weird breast milk stains. But if this happens to you, which I'm sure it has, just soap and water usually gets it out. And if not, you can use some OxyClean or um, Branch Basics Oxygen Boost. I want to try that. Let me know in the comments if you guys have tried that. I have yet to make the leap to that non-toxic option because I still have OxyClean, so I'm still using it. But honestly, would like to bite the bullet and try the Branch Basics Oxygen Boost. But Yes, I'm pouring my water. I am about to fill the Berkey water filter. Just really doing those last things before bed that I always do, kind of closing up the kitchen or the house. So I always like to make sure that the Berkey is filled because that is our fresh water. If you don't know what a Berkey is, it's just one of the best water filters out there. You don't need any plugs or electricity to get it going. All you gotta do is take sink water pour it in and it filters out a ton of chemicals and it's great so and they have a lot of different sizes as well and I'm also going to bag a whole bunch of breast milk because as you can see my jar is almost full as I like to bag 
my breast milk every three to four days. I know they recommend to bag about three days for the best nutrition, but a lot of times I'm bagging every four days, okay? Because life gets busy. So I'm going to bag all of my extra breast milk and put that in the freezer and start tomorrow and do some of these things all over again. (laughs) That's just life. Life as a homemaker, life in general is repetitive. But finding beauty in the mundane is how we keep life going and keeping it exciting, right? Anyways, you guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Again, congratulations to any of the moms out there that have just had a baby and are in this season with me. Let me know some of your homemaking tips if you are a stay-at-home mom as well, or even if you're not, just what are some of the things that make your life easier in this stage of life or in this season of life of having a newborn? Thank you guys so much for watching and all your support always, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.